that so we're out here cj5 is idling underneath you right now we're out here in the north georgia mountains i got Brittany, my girlfriend and ashby my outlandish crazy dog that i rescued from the mountains that you haven't seen since that video where i rescued her she's in the jeep right now she's being a hellion she's out of control she's part red wolf and part i don't know pound of the baskerville whatever she's horrible but she's cute most of the time but anyway we're gonna tool up in the mountains maybe have a fire just sit back and enjoy it and this whole video is for memorial day and it's gonna be you know why we should remember more memorial day. memorial day why we should remember it why we should acknowledge it because there's not a whole lot to celebrate uh, in some regards on Memorial Day and the other part is to celebrate the sacrifices of others. But regardless, we're going to go down a list of some things that I want to share with y'all to help y'all help people better understand what Memorial Day is actually about. It's not just about hot dogs and whatnot. But anyway, enjoy the scenic view as we go in and I'll be back with you shortly. Would you like to say hello, Brittany? Hey. You enjoying the CJ5 in the mountains? Oh, yeah. What about you, Ashby? You got anything to say? We love it here. Yeah, there we go. Ashby digs it. She's a wild beast. I found her in the mountains over in such as Georgia. Ain't that right, Ashby? Somebody had abandoned her in the mountains. We're going to leave you mounted where you are right now. The Jeep is smoking like a waitress. And uh, not really sure why. Usually it only does that when I've let it sit for a while, but I've been driving it quite a bit here lately. As usual, it's gonna be loud and rattly, so y'all are used to that in some of these videos, but I haven't had the five out in a long time, so we thought we'd cruise up here. A little ASMR. CJ5 in a four-wheel drive. CJ5 in a four-wheel drive. Ashby on her tail. <laughs> I've had Brittany listening to C.W. McCall's classic CJ5 with the four-wheel drive. Brittany said she liked doing this out here on the CJ5 because this is, and I quote, what the rig was made for. So, that's how you know she's pretty good. <laughs> right now it smells like burning rubber for some reason. That's always a good sign. But... That's probably all the talking we're going to do. We're just going to drive in here. There's a creek crossing up in front. And then we'll get back with you. So just enjoy the sounds of the CJ5.
So we, where I started the video wasn't far from where, uh, it's like a little day camp area. We, we have camped here before, uh, but it's a nice little spot. I don't know that y'all have ever actually seen this spot before in a video. So I'm gonna shut it off real quick, get you mounted over to a tripod, because it'll be easier to handle, and then I'll bring, bring you back after that. Does that sound good? It sounds good to me. And there's Brittany and Ashby walking by. I'll let you see Ashby. She's gained about 20 pounds since the last time y'all saw her, and she's doing real healthy now, so that's good. All right, so we got up here. Here's the fire pit, and here's Ashby the Wonder Pup, all right? And I'm gonna pick that bottle up. There's a little bit of trash hanging around here. Not too bad up here. They usually do a pretty good job. Uh, Brittany's down looking at the creek right now, so she'll be back in a second. But here's here's Ashby Poo. All right, this is the pup I found out the mountains. When I got her, she was riddled with fleas, was scrawny, and uh, everything. So we rescued her. That's been quite a while ago. And now we've had her checked. She's got all her shots and all that since the last time y'all seen her. Uh, no heartworms, no intestinal worms. She's gained up to about what she should weigh. She weighs about 42 pounds. She's a good size pup. And then uh, let's see if we can't get a little fire going. All this wood's wet. It rained like an obscene amount today. But I just kind of want a little fire. It ain't gonna be a good one, just a little one. Kind of cooking in the background. Might make some s'mores or something, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> Brittany says the CJ5 looks badass. There's a prophylactive laying over there, the wrapper, and uh, some sunglasses. So, somebody was up here making the beast with two backs, as they say. The sunglasses is missing the wind. Yeah. Anyway, but otherwise, other than uh, prophylactics and whatnot, prophylactic, pro whatever, condom, regardless, other than uh, the wrapper of one, there's actually very little trash at the site, which is really nice because people are animals and they suck and they throw crap everywhere and uh, it muddles the mood. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna see about getting the fire going, which it's actually going semi-decent right now, and go and get the chairs, and after that, I'm gonna go down a list of some stuff I wanna share with y'all. We're gonna sit here and chill for a little bit, rest. There's Brittany and Ashby Poo over there. Ashby, <whistles> there she is, see her? Ashby, come here. Look at her, she's a real nice pup, see her? She's a real nice pup dog. Take a look at this pup dog right here. Take a look. See this pup dog? Best pup dog in the world. Got her a nice little harness right here. She likes to lay in the crank and whatnot. All right, the fire's kind of going along right now. Got the chairs out and everything. Drinking some water. It's hot out here. It's very humid because it rains so much early. So basically what I got for you is uh, uh, I want to read some accounts of uh, service members during different wars, men in, in, uh, from World War I all the way up to Iraq and Afghanistan and the major conflicts. I'm not skipping anything on purpose. Ashby, don't hit the tripod. Um, there are other conflicts all in the middle. Like I don't have one from the Spanish-American War, or the Civil War, all that. I'm just doing World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan. There's all kinds of men and women in other areas and stuff that did incredible things. So before anybody starts coming at me for that, but these are ones that I found uh, that I think obviously are worth remembering. Uh, all of them are, but we'll start with World War One. 
and uh, and work our way up to Afghanistan. All right, so this is uh, the side table. These are all Medal of Honor recipients. Uh, and since Memorial Day is for the ones that didn't make it home, uh, I want to read through. These are just a, a representation of the situations and the kind of things that our troops were in in these different conflicts. Um, there's lots and lots of people that deserved the Medal of Honor that never got one. There's people on the list that have received the Medal of Honor uh, that quite honestly don't deserve them, especially early ones because early early people, uh, when it first came out, especially during the Civil War, they were kind of handing them out like candy. Uh, it's not been like that in a long time. Uh, now it's a lot more uh, rigorous for someone to be awarded the Medal of Honor. Uh, it's very rare for them to survive whatever their citation is for. Generally, they pass away uh, during um, the actions that ultimately cause them to get the Medal of Honor. Uh, keep in mind, the Medal of Honor is not something that people are looking to be awarded. All right, A lot of people say they... Uh, this guy got the Medal of Honor. He didn't get nothing. I mean, he was in, they're in the combat zone risking their life for their country and for their, for their fellow soldier. And generally they die in the combat zone and then somebody down the line recomm recommends them for the Medal of Honor. Nobody's trying to get the Medal of Honor. That's what I'm saying. Camera's gonna move sometimes. Ashby's the one doing it. So anyway, starting off with World War I, this uh, gentleman was, a uh, let's see, second lieutenant, Albert E. Basil. Or Basil. I might pronounce some of these names wrong or the towns or whatever where they're at, so just bear with me for that. Uh, he's U.S. Army. He was in Company B, 148th Infantry, 37th Division. Um, and the Medal of Honor action date is September 27th, 1918. All right. Uh, near Ivory, 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 France. Um, and here's his... Uh, Citation. Upon hearing that a squad leader of his platoon had been severely wounded while attempting to capture an enemy machine gun nest about 200 yards in advance of the assault line and somewhat to the right, 2nd Lieutenant Basil requested permission to go to the rescue of, of the wounded corporal. After thrice repeating his request and permission have been, having been reluctantly given due to the heavy artillery, rifle, and machine gun fire and heavy deluge of gas in which the company was at the time. Accompanied by a volunteer, uh, accompanied by a volunteer, he worked his way forward and reaching the wounded man, placed him upon his shoulders and instantly was killed by enemy fire. All right, so that's, that's 1918, this is World War I. Um, so I mean, just think about that. You've got a wounded corporal out in the, out in the combat zone this guy's begging to go get him. He finally gets him, gets all the way out there, gets permission, gets all the way out there, and is instantly killed the second he picks him up. All right. This is not, it's, it's, gener it's not in human nature to be that selfless. So it's, it's, or at least not in my opinion, it's not. Um, so you've got ultimate sacrifice here. This is World War One. The next one, uh, uh, and, and this gentleman was from uh, Ohio. And he, he was killed, like I say, on the same day of a citation, September 27, 1918, in France. And he's buried in Woodville Union Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio. All right, the next gentleman. I've got two from World War II, one from Europe and one from the South Pacific because they are unique, different combat zones. They're very unique uh, theaters of war. It's almost like two completely different entities going on. They're all part of World War II, but they're two very different wars. So this one's from uh, Saipan, uh, Marianas Islands. Uh, the Medal of Honor action date July 7th, 1944. And uh, his rank was Private First Class, 4th Battalion, 10th Marine, 2nd Marine Division. His name is Harold Christ Agarholm. Uh, for con conspicuous gallantry, at the risk of his life and above the and beyond the call of duty while serving with the 4th Battalion, 10th Marine, 2nd Marine Division in action against enemy Japanese forces on Saipan, Marianas Islands, 
July 7th, 1944, when the enemy launched a fierce determined counterattack against our positions and overran a neighboring artillery battalion, Private First Class Agerholm immediately volunteered to assist in efforts to check the hostile attack and evacuate our wounded, locating and appropriating an abandoned ambulance jeep. He repeatedly made extremely perilous trips under heavy rifle and mortar fire and single-handedly loaded and excavate evacuated approximately 45 casualties working tirelessly and with utter disregard for his own safety during a grueling period of more than three hours despite intense persistent enemy fire he ran out to aid two men whom he believed to be wounded marines but was himself mortally wounded by a japanese sniper while carrying out his hazardous mission Private First Class Agraholm's brilliant initiative, great personal valor, and self-sacrificing efforts in the face of almost certain death reflect the highest credit upon himself and the United States Naval Service. His gallantry gave his life. He, ga he gallantly gave his life for his country. Uh, let's see. And he was from Wisconsin. Um, Agraholm was. And he's buried at Mound Cemetery, Racine, Wisconsin. All right, so this is also World War II. This is May 24th, 1944 is the action date. Uh, he was a sergeant in Company B, 15th Infantry, 3rd Infantry Division, U.S. Army. Uh, and this is near Sisterana. De Littoria, Italy. All right, forgive the butchering of the location. And his name is Sylvester Antelok, I think is how you would say it. Near Cisterna di Littoria, Italy, he charged 200 yards over flat, coverless terrain to destroy an enemy machine gun nest during the second day of the offensive, which broke through the German cordon of steel around the Anzio beachhead. Fully 30 yards in advance of a squad, he ran into withering enemy machine gun fire, machine pistol and rifle fire. Three times he was struck by bullets and knocked to the ground, but each time he struggled to his feet to continue his relentless advance. With one shoulder deeply gashed, his right arm shattered, he continued to rush directly into the enemy fire concentration with his submachine gun wedged under his uninjured arm. Within 15 yards of the enemy strong point, where where he opened fire at deadly close range, killing two Germans and forcing the remaining ten to surrender. He reorganized his men and, refusing to seek medical attention so badly needed, chose to lead the way toward another strong point a hundred yards in the distance. Utterly disregarding the hail of bullets concentrated upon him, he had stormed ahead nearly three-fourths of the space between strong points when he was instantly killed by hostile enemy fire. Inspired by his example, his squad went on to overwhelm the enemy troops by his supreme sacrifice, superb fighting courage, and heroic devotion to the attack. Sergeant Antelak was directly responsible for eliminating 20 Germans, capturing an enemy machine gun, and clearing the path for his company to advance. All right, so this is in Italy. Uh, he was also from Ohio. And uh, he was from Clairsville, Belmont County, Ohio. He died on that day, May 24th, 1944, in Italy. And he's buried at ABMC Sicily Rome Cemetery, Nettunio, Italy. All right, now we're on to Korea. Uh, now a lot of people discount Korea. They don't talk about Korea. Korea has some of the worst fighting American troops has ever been in for the most prolonged period of time. It's a living hell. Chosen Reservoir, uh, all these different places in Korea, it's a living nightmare. All right, so Korea doesn't get nowhere near the recognition for what our men did in Korea. The nurses, you know, people think of Korea, if you think about it all, they think of MASH, you know. You got nurses and doctors and stuff like that. That's a lot more to, to Korea than that. Um, and this is uh, Corporal Company E, 2nd Battalion, 1st Marines, 1st Marine Division, uh, United States Marine Corps. Medal of Honor action date is June 10th, 1951. 
in Hanyong, Korea. Hanyong. Uh, and his name is Charles Jean uh, Abrell, I believe. For conspicuous gallantry at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as a fire team leader in Company E in action against enemy aggressor forces while advancing with his platoon in an attack against well-conceived and heavily fortified enemy hill positions. Corporal, Corporal Aberell voluntarily rushed forward through the assaulting squad, which was pinned down by a hell of intense and accurate automatic weapons fire from a hostile bunker situated on a commanding on commanding ground. Although previously wounded by enemy hand grenade fragments, he proceeded, proceeded to carry out a bold, single-handed attack against the bunker, exhorting his com comrades to follow him, sustaining two additional wounds as he stormed towards the emplacements. He resolutely pulled the pin from a grenade clutched in his hand and hurled his body into the bunker with the live missile still in his grasp. Fatally wounded in the resulting explosion, which killed the entire entire enemy gun crew within the stronghold, Corporal Aberell, by his valiant spirit of self-sacrifice in the face of certain deaths, served to inspire all of his comrades and contributed directly to the to the success of his platoon in attaining its objective. His superb courage and heroic initiative sustained. Initiative sustain and enhance the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. He gallantly gave his life for his country. And he died that day, June 10th, 1951, near Hoshkawan, North Korea. And he's buried in West Lawn Cemetery in Indiana, which is the state that he was from. All right, so I realize I'm not in the same location as my other uh, readings, but uh, that's for a reason. Uh, I actually had saved the Medal of Honor recipient accounts on this iPad, but then when I went up into the woods, I forgot the iPad, uh, but I had sent them uh, to my iPhone, and somehow doing that, I accidentally forgot a Vietnam. So I'm going to cut this one in for Vietnam, and then it'll go back to the woods and finish the rest of the video. So I apologize for the uh, lack of continuity in the background and stuff, but this is uh, Medal of Honor action date is August 24th, 1969. Uh, this gentleman was a Lance Corporal in Company E, 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion, 3rd Marine Division, Rhine FMF. And, and this is in the Quang Tri Province, Republic of Vietnam. Um, and we're in neighborhood, so you'll hear some noises in the background and stuff, so just ignore that, please. And this gentleman's name was Richard Allen Anderson. And his citation reads as follows. For conspicuous gallantry at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as an assistant team leader with Company E in connection with combat operations against an armed enemy while conducting a patrol during the early morning hours Lance Corporal Anderson's reconnaissance team came under a heavy volume of automatic weapons and machine gun fire from a numerically superior and well concealed enemy force. Although painfully wounded in both legs and knocked to the ground during the initial moments of the fierce firefight, Lance Corporal Anderson assumed a prone position and continued to deliver intense suppressive fire in an attempt to repulse the attackers. Moments later, he was wounded a second time by an enemy soldier who had approached to within eight feet of the team's position. Undaunted, he continued to pour a relentless stream of fire at the assaulting unit, even while a companion was treating his leg wounds. Observing an enemy grenade land between himself and the other Marine, Lance Corporal Anderson immediately rolled over and covered the lethal weapon with his body, absorbing the full effects of the detonation. 
By his indomitable courage, inspiring initiative, and selfless devotion to duty, Lance Corporal Anderson was instrumental in saving several Marines from serious injury or possible death. His actions were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. His gallantry, he gallantly gave his life in service of his country. And this gentleman was from Houston, Texas. Uh, he died that day, August 24, 1969. Republic of Vietnam, and he is buried in Forest Park Cemetery, Lawndale, Texas. So, obviously want to make sure we get Vietnam out, and now we're going to move on to the rest of the video. Alright, now we're moving on to Afghanistan, and this is Staff Sergeant uh, 71st Cavalry Regiment, 3rd Brigade, Combat Team, 10th Mountain Division, U.S. Army. And his Medal of, Action, uh, Medal of Honor action date is June 21st, 2006. Uh, place of action is Nuristan Province, Afghanistan. Staff Sergeant Jared C. Monty distinguished himself by acts of gallantry above and beyond the call of duty while serving as a team leader with headquarters and headquarters troop 3rd squadron 71st cavalry regiment 3rd brigade combat team 10th mountain division in connection with combat operations against armed enemy in Nuristan province afghanistan on june 21st 2006 while staff sergeant monty was leading a mission aimed at gathering intelligence and directing fire against the enemy his 16-man patrol was was attacked by as many as 50 enemy fighters on the verge of being overrun. Staff Sergeant Monty quickly directed his men to set up a defensive position behind a rock formation. He then called for indirect fire support, directly targeting the rounds upon the enemy who had closed to within 50 meters of his position. While still directing fire, Staff Sergeant Mar Monty personally engaged the enemy, enemy with his rifle and a grenade, successfully disrupting the, an attempt to flank his patrol. Staff Sergeant Monty then realized that one of his soldiers was lying wounded on the open ground between the advancing enemy and the patrol's position. With complete disregard, uh, with complete disregard for his own safety, Staff Sergeant Monty twice attempted to move from behind cover of the rocks into the face of relentless enemy fire to rescue his fallen comrade. Determined to not leave his soldier, Staff Sergeant Monty made a third attempt to cross open terrain through intense enemy fire. On this final attempt, he was mortally wounded, sacrificing his life in an effort to save his fellow soldier. Staff Sergeant Monty's selfless acts of heroism inspired his patrol to fight off... Uh, let's see. Sorry, I had to save it in two different spots. It's a very uh, longer one. Um... Staff Sergeant, Mar uh, let's see. Staff Sergeant Monty's selfless acts of heroism inspired his patrol to fight off the larger enemy force. Staff Sergeant Monty's immeasurable courage and uncommon valor are in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself, headquarters, and headquarters troop 3rd Squadron, 71st Cavalry Regiment, 3rd Brigade, Combat Team, 10th Mountain Division, and the United States Army. He was from Bristol County, Massachusetts. He died June 21st, 2006, Nuristan Province, Afghanistan, and he's buried at the Massachusetts, Massachusetts National Cemetery in Bourne, MA. And finally, the last one we have here is staff, another staff sergeant, Travis W. Atkins. Uh, Second, uh, Second Platoon Delta Company, 2nd Battalion, 14th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 10th Mount Division. And this is in Abu Samak, Iraq. Uh, let's see. While manning a static observation post in the town of Abu Samak, Iraq, Staff Sergeant Atkins was notified that four suspicious individuals walking in two pairs were crossing an intersection not far from his position. 
Staff Sergeant Atkins immediately moved his squad to interdict the individuals. One of the individuals began behaving erratically, prompting Staff Sergeant Atkins to disembark from his patrol vehicle and approached approached to conduct a search. Both individuals responded belligerently towards Staff Sergeant Atkins, who then engaged the individual he had intended to search in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Staff Sergeant Atkins tried to wrestle the insurgent's arms behind his back when he noticed the insurgent was reaching for something under his clothes. Staff Sergeant Atkins immediately wrapped him in a bear hug and threw him to the ground, away from his fellow soldiers. Staff Sergeant Atkins maintained his hold on the insurgent, placing his body on top of him, further sheltering his patrol. While, while Staff Sergeant Atkins on top of him, the insurgent detonated a bomb strapped to his body, killing Staff Sergeant Atkins. Staff Sergeant Atkins acted with complete disregard for his own safety. In this critical and selfless act of valor, Staff Sergeant Atkins saved the lives of the three other soldiers who were with him and gallantly gave his life for his country. Staff Sergeant Atkins' undaunted courage Warrior spirit and steadfast devotion to duty are in the keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the 2nd Brigade Combat Team in the United States Army. And he was from Bozeman, Montana. He was killed June 1st, 2007, and he's buried in Sunset Hills Cemetery, Bozeman, Montana. So that's all the ones I have. It's not super uplifting. Uh, these are just these are just a handful of the thousands and thousands of men, most of which died and never had an award given to them, never received an accolade. Uh, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them, millions of them, from all these wars. All the ones from World War One are gone. Most of the ones from World War II are gone. Most of them from Korea are gone. The ones from Vietnam uh, are fleetingly rare these days. They're dying by the hundreds every day. And within another 20 years, there probably won't be hardly any of them left. And there's still a lot of Iraq and Afghanistan and Desert Storm and all those guys. Um, but it's important to remember what Memorial Day is actually for. It's for these men. It's for all the men like them. It's the ones that died in a foreign land doing something that may, they may or may not have agreed with. A lot of these guys that I just read to you, if you were talking to them privately, they love their country. They probably didn't necessarily want to be doing what they were doing. Or maybe they did. Some of them did, I'm sure. A lot of them didn't want to. A lot of them went in the early wars because they were drafted. They didn't have anything else to do. They didn't, they didn't have the luxury of saying no. So they went. I know personally my grandfathers, neither one of them wanted to go when they were drafted. None of my great uncles wanted to go. They all went because they were told to. It's what was required of them by their country. They didn't want to go, but they knew it's what they had to do. A lot of them are like that, especially obviously in the era of the draft. But this is what Memorial Day is actually for. It's for the ones that didn't make it home. It's not an excuse to get drunk and lay face down. It's not an excuse for any of that. You know, obviously things are full of turmoil right now. The country's not in the best place it's ever been historically. Everybody's upset in one way or another for all different reasons. Uh, some of you may not have agreed with some of these wars that we're in. Vietnam's a very contentious topic, Iraq, Afghanistan. The thing is, you don't have to agree with why we were there, but surely we can agree that the men that were there were honorable men, honorable women, and they did remarkable things in situations that none of us had to be in, didn't want to be in, and many of them died. Some of them for things that they didn't understand, some of them because they, they wanted to save their fellow soldier and it was as simple as that. And that's worth remembering, it's worth honoring, and it's worth living your life in a conduct and manner this Memorial Day that's conducive to an adequate memory of those men and women that have done these things. There's lots of women that didn't get any recognition in this era as well, that were nurses, uh, truck drivers, all kinds of things like that. Uh, many of them probably should have deserved the Medal of Honor in different accounts for things that they did, but they weren't recorded at the time. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you don't have to, to, uh, to love your government to love your country. I don't love my government. I never have. I love my country, though. And, and 
I love these men and women that fought for my country in the past and that gives me the right to be able to be out here and do the things that I do and drive the Jeep and spend time with my girlfriend and my dog. None of that could have happened without the men that did the things they did in every war that we've been in. Even the ones that you don't think are important. You never know how important they were if we'd never been in them, you know. So I'm not going to preach at you much more than this. I just wanted to share that with you. I think it's important to remember. I got those all off of the Medal of Honor uh, recipients website. Uh, you can go through and search by conflict, by era. Um, they've got them from every war that we've ever been in, starting with the Civil War moving forward. Um, there's quite a few that received two Medals of Honor. They, 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 there's a whole lot of interesting stuff. So just take time, if you have a moment, to maybe scroll through that page, look up um, what some of these people did. I have a friend that knew uh, a guy in Vietnam that received a Medal of Honor that was killed in action. Uh, that one of my good friends at the cigar shop knew him personally for a long time and remembered when he went missing. So these people all had families and friends and everything like that. So. But we're going to sit out here. I'm going to see if I can get the fire going because it died again while I'm sitting here. And then uh, we're just going to chillax for a little bit and then get the Jeep, maybe go on up in the mountain and uh, get some water out of a spring up there because the water's real cold and pure coming off the mountain. But until next time, remember, thank God for all the ones that came before us that did the things we don't have to do now. And remember, Willie's for life, Jeep's for life, pup dogs, and girls that like riding a CJ5 for life. Mm -hmm. And remember, just be grateful for what you have. Even if it's not everything that it should be, it's still better than anywhere else in the world. Just remember that. And don't let anybody ever tell you any different. Get it? Yeah, buddy, yeah.